Work It's Live Wire with me, John Hammond. And for the next half hour, we're talking about, well, things like this. No, not little plastic animals, promise you. Uh, this apparently is what they think Nessie looks like, or would look like, or could have looked like. Now, I don't know which of those three you would actually use, because it depends whether you believe or not that these animals do, or whatever you would class them as, these species do exist. Well, Dr. Carl Schuker is my guest for the next half hour. He's written this book, which is called The Lost Ark, New and Rediscovered Animals of the 20th Century. And that's what we're talking about. Uh, animals that have been lost or rediscovered, quite simply. There are some really weird and wonderful ones. And I suppose, Carl, your work takes you all over the world. Quite a lot, yes, yes, to find, find out about these, not necessarily to find them, but to find out about them. Because mm. surprisingly, although there's an entire book of these animals, people tend to think of animals as dying out or becoming extinct. They don't tend to think of the other side of the coin, animals that are finally turning up after having been dismissed as native folklore, superstition, or supposedly well, extinct and rediscovered alive and well. Nessie. Yes, Nessie. For <laughs> instance. There have been, been lots of speculation around it, and I suppose this is probably the best known in this country yeah, yeah. of animals. We've actually got some, some drawings of the suggestions that, um, uh, that that Nessie could actually look like. Do you believe there is Nessie? I believe there's something to be answered in Loch Ness. There are so many strange occurrences, whether they're all animal or not, I don't mm. know. But one thing that really does appeal to me, and it fact that, that um, picture that we can see at the moment is, is a good example of this. In August uh, 1972, there were some underwater cameras and some sonar equipment in Loch Ness. And one uh, early morning, uh, a shoal of fish went by. That was recorded by the sonar equipment. And then something large and solid, about 30 feet long, followed after them. Mm. The sonar took the record, the records that showed the size of it. But at the same time, the cameras were taking pictures. And the pictures that they took were those large flipper-like pictures, which we can see um, outlined in the picture on the screen. Yeah, that's just a drawing taken from the Yes, but it, the picture, it, it yeah. was actually based upon those flippers because the flippers were over six feet long and right. they don't match any animal known today, but they do match the pleasy saw which you've just been holding up. As you can see, the diamond-shaped flippers. Now, that right. officially died out about 60 million years ago with the dinosaurs, mm. but if it's still alive today, it's interesting to, to note that Nessie, as described by people who've seen it, not only in the water but also on land. People don't know that Nessie has been seen on land. Really? Yeah, out of the water in, in its entirety. And it's almost an exact fit to the plesiosaur. Do you think it exists? Well, again, I think there's some good evidence for some very large animal, whether it's a plesiosaur, I wouldn't like mm. to say, but there's certainly some very large animal in Loch Ness. How do you describe yourself? I mean, you are a zoologist, yeah. but, but are you a bit of a detective as well? Well, and what's known, the, 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 the buzzword is cryptozoologist at the present time, which is crypto-hidden. Mm. Basically, someone who investigates and studies controversial animals, animals that traditional science hasn't formally recognised. Like Nessie, like things like abominable snowmen, living dinosaurs in the Congo, you right. name it, we study it basically. But um, I mean, it, it has in the past been written off as a somewhat cranky subject, but as the book shows, there are plenty of precedents for major new animals turning up that we didn't know anything about. Well, we being Western science. The native people, they always do know about them. When you say new animals, they're not new to them, they're only well, new to us. We've got some pictures, and the first one, if we go to the Vietnam-Laos border, uh, and this is the Vu Quang Ox, is yep, that right? That's right, yes. The Vu Quang is a, an area of nature reserve in Vietnam, and that turned up as recently as 1992. Uh, in that year, a team of conservationists from England and from Vietnam joined forces and investigated this area to determine whether it would be a suitable uh, natural nature reserve. And while they were there, they found some skulls of a very odd antelope-like creature with these very long horns. And mm. instantly, they realised that this was something new. There was nothing in the whole of Asia that had horns like that. And they said, well, you know, what is this animal? Do you know it to the natives? Oh, yeah, we know it. We call it the mountain goat or the forest ox, several different names for it. And they said, well, you know, could you get them some specimens for us? And a year later, this turned up. This is a stuffed one, the first complete animal that we have. And it is totally so new. this was discovered dead? Yeah. Is that why there's a lack of facial expression? Yes, some there, of, some of the, 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 the facial uh, areas are missing, but yeah. you know, it's about 90% complete. And um, it is you know, dramatically new. It's nothing like any animal known at all. In fact, it's nearest relatives, apparently a group that died out about four and a half million years ago. Don't the natives eat it? Yeah, they do, unfortunately. This and is the great... Really this this is around. the great... Well, in fact, the interesting thing, given another 10 years, it might have been extinct without ever having been discovered. We've literally discovered that just in the nick of time. About 250 of them left. They live in the mountains during the summer, but during the winter they come down to the lowlands, and that's when they, the natives mm. hunt them. So how many have been seen now? 
about 20 of them have act dead specimens have been seen I mean the native northern world but westerners have yet to actually see a living one at the, as we speak there is a team there at the moment attempting mm -hmm. to film one if they do that will be the first living one seen by any western scientist so that could be on our screens one of the days. Do you get very excited at that one, so the prospect of... Because there's, there's one bird in your book where they just found a feather, the peacock. Yes, it? that's right, the Congo the, the, peacock. The, the Congo peacock that, that we'll come to in a second. We'll, we'll, we'll actually come back to that because we've yep. got some pictures of yep. that. I'd rather like to show you the, the okapi uh, before that, though, which is another one. Well, that's the most... Yeah, that, that is really the most famous new animal of the century. The short-necked giraffe. Exactly, a contradiction in terms, but there mm. you are. I mean, there's a story behind that was, in 1890, Henry Morton Stanley, the famous, you know, Dr Livingstone, I presume, explorer, um, wrote a book called In Darkest Africa, and in there he said that in the Congo, the Wambuti pygmies knew of an animal that they mm. called Atti, and they called it a donkey. Well, the zoologist straight away said, look, there are no such things as donkeys in the middle of a jungle, so forget it. But fortunately, not everyone's quite so pessimistic, and in 1900, mm. Uh, an explorer and a Uganda protectorate governor called Sir Harry Johnston decided to follow this up mm. and he went into the jungle, brought some remains back, sent them to the London Natural History Museum, sent some more in 1901 and he was found, he thought at first because of the striping he thought he would be a forest zebra, but yes. it turned out not to be a zebra or a donkey but a short-necked giraffe, a very specialised creature, again going back millions of years, his ancestry. <laughs> They, the pygmies knew it, the pygmies hunted, but we didn't so, believe it. So that there are so many. If you, by the way, if, if you want to give us a ring uh, and talk to Dr. Carl, 0272 297766, you saw the number there, pick up the phone and give us a ring. Now, let's go underwater for the mega mouth shark, yep. which we've got a picture of as well. And this is discovered, what, 1976? Exactly, yeah. Totally by accident. Um, mm. It was a fishing vessel, well, a research fishing vessel off the Ho Hawaiian Islands. They dropped their anchor one day, picked it up the rest, rest of the day, at the end mm. of the day, found out they couldn't basically get it up. There was something attached to it. They finally hauled it up and found this creature. That's it's a exact heck of a one. mouth, isn't it? It had tried to swallow well, the anchor, puts basically. puts Bernard Manning to shame, <laughs> really? Well, it's got over 400 teeth, over 236 rows of teeth. Oof. So, yeah, yeah, a dentist nightmare. But um, basically, this was a totally new shark, about 15 feet long, totally new family. It's not no other shark, anything like that at all. How come then, Carl? Th these things aren't discovered. How, well, this one, we, it took until 1990 to find out why. And in 1990, they caught a living one. It had been trapped in some nets by accident. Mm. And they managed to, to release it, put it back into the wild, but they attached some uh, monitoring devices to right. it. And for two days, until the batteries ran out, they could trace where it was going. And they found out that during the day, it was in the depths of the, the ocean, but during mm. the evening, it rose to the surface. Uh, it was known as vertical migration. So, of course, it was never seen during the day when all the fishermen were about. These yes. animals in the depths. They only came to the surface during the evening. So how many do you think there are now? There are probably quite a few because they've been found in many different places. California, Hawaiian Islands, Western Australia, but to in Japan. because of their lifestyle, they're tucked yeah, down, exactly. down below. And <laughs> what, one up to 17 feet long, that's the biggest. I mean, that's the third largest shark in the world. And we only found it just over 20 years ago. Tell me the situation then. The, we've got a picture of the Congo peacock, which we'll show you in a second or two. Now, this was discovered by a single feather. Yes. Wasn't it? So, so yeah. what happened? I mean, was someone trottling along and suddenly thought, oh, a feather, <laughs> picked it up and said, this belongs to something and we'll go investigate it. And, well, and, and yeah, not, not far short, actually. It, it was in 1913 in uh, the Congo. Again, the Congo has been a marvellous area for discoveries. Mm. Mountain gorilla, all sorts of things have turned up this century. But this was an expedition, actually, um, studying the Okapi. And um, one of the ornithologists in the team who was, who was collecting bird um, remains, specimens, whatever, saw a native headdress and there was this one feather in it which he couldn't identify. Now, he was a world expert on the Congolese mm. avifauna, so he should have known, but he didn't. And he was obviously greatly intrigued, bought the headdress, took it back, consulted with people all over the world, and no one knew what it was. And finally, almost in desperation, he just put it in, in the drawer of his desk and left it for year in, year out, and thought, well, one day I will find out what it was. In 1936, he was completing an entire book on Congolese birds and went to the uh, Congo Museum in Belgium. Mm. And while he was there, had a look around all the major exhibits, um, nothing really of interest, went down a, a corridor that no one used, with a very dusty cabinet and an even dustier pair of stuffed birds right at the top. And as he got walked by, he realised to his delight, one of them had got plumes that were identical to this mystery feather. Yeah. So he contacted all the people concerned and said, you know, where's this come from? Well, we've had this for years and, you know, grubby looking thing, we don't want it, type of thing. And eventually found out that the birds had indeed come from the Congo. They were known as the Mabulu. Mm. In 1937, he went collected some living ones and it turned out to be a peacock, but not the type that we know with the big train that opens and get the large fan in the eyes and whatever. This was a very primitive one that literally had never evolved, this, this beautiful thing that we know so well in relation to normal peacocks. And also, it's the only African peacock. There isn't a single right. other peacock in Africa. Because evolution does play a big part in these. Exactly, I mean, are, yes. are we talking in your book about new animals or animals that have evolved from other animals or animals that have interbred? 
Well, the, the interbreeding, that's hybridization.